Welcome back to the second day of the Second Opinion GT Drift Academy. That does not roll off the tongue, does it? No matter, let's not waste any more time, and just jump straight in. To begin, I realized after I recorded the voiceover for the previous video that I didn't properly explain why you would want the vast majority of assists off while drifting, nor why we're using comfort hard tires. First, the tires, which are pretty simple. Worse tires means less grip. Since drifting is about managing a lack of grip, we usually want tires with minimal grip. In real life, there are special tires specifically designed for drifting. I don't know of a console game that replicates this, and most amateur drifters honestly use dirt cheap or even used tires anyway. While drifting, you do want the ability to regain grip, and you do want your tires to grab to some extent, so that you can control the car. Once your car gets powerful enough, you might want to upgrade to better tires just to maintain basic control. Some people even use different quality tires on the front and rear in order to create a specific driving feel. But for our purposes here, I think we'll be sticking with comfort hard all around. As for the assists, it really comes down to the nature of what assists are designed to do. Assists are designed to allow you to maintain artificial racing control over your car. What I mean by that is they take control away from you to allow you easier management of your vehicle if you're in over your head. They're supposed to allow you to maintain grip, limit oversteer and understeer, etc. Traction control and stability control effectively strip power away from you in order to maintain order. Unfortunately, power is the most important part of breaking the wheels loose when drifting, as well as keeping them from regaining grip once you do initiate a drift. Skid Recovery Force is a fictitious assist that uses the power of the gods to straighten your car out when it starts to slide, which is the antithesis of a drift, so you should probably keep it off. Though it's important to note that I didn't find much of a difference when using the assist with this car. Active steering doesn't seem to make a noticeable enough difference for me most of the time to care. But regardless, it too takes control away from the driver, even if it's a minuscule amount. So there's no reason not to leave it off. Finally, why manual transmission? It's pretty simple. Using the manual transmission gives you the most control. You can drift in automatic with most cars, but it can often be way more difficult than it's worth. The car doesn't know when the best time is to upshift and downshift for drifting, and it doesn't alter its behavior to fit your build. So the manual transmission is the best option. I used to use auto exclusively until Gran Turismo 5. I just couldn't do manual. But trust me when I say that it's definitely something that's worth learning, and it's just as easy done as it is said. Honestly, the hardest thing for me to learn personally was just knowing when to downshift, but you'll no doubt get the hang of it over time. Now, first things first, head back to Suzuka East, just for a moment. When you arrive, go into the driver options and turn on the racing line. Now unfortunately, there is no reverse version of this track, so the racing line can only go one way. Head down to the other end of the S's and try the slides you were doing last time. And hopefully you've been practicing. Many people will try and tell you that the racing line isn't important to drifting, but I completely disagree. So what's the point of the racing line while racing? Well, it shows you how to get around the track as quickly as possible. The optimal racing line is the theoretical quickest way around a course. It's quickest because it focuses on maintaining as much speed as possible, while also allowing you to exit corners with as much speed as possible as well. And guess what? Speed is also important to drifting. The three factors that really detail a good drift is the line you take, the angle you're at, and the speed you're going. A good line can help you drift at a tighter angle while going faster. And what helps you go faster? Following the general racing line. Now keep in mind that the optimal line for a track changes depending on your vehicle, weather, and driving style. Though that isn't reflected in the racing line option in Gran Turismo. But regardless, this more generalized line can often help you get a feel for how to drive or drift a track. So whenever you're having trouble, turn it on and loosely follow it to see if you improve. 
With that understood, exit this track and take yourself over to Tsukuba. Today, we're going to be focusing on learning how to find the right line that allows for smooth drifts. So keep the racing line on and enter the track. You can mess around on any of these turns if you want, but there's one in particular that we're interested in, and I'm willing to bet you know which one it is. Indeed, we've got our sights set on drifting the final sweeper corner. The one that you start before. This corner is a lot easier to drift than it looks, so stop yourself somewhere at the end or in the middle of the straight leading up to the turn. When you're ready, start accelerating toward it. Don't go too fast, however. If you want to gauge about what speed you need to be going, switch out to sports tires and drive the turn normally. You can also turn on the suggested gear, which is a fantastic tool to help you out. When I'm drifting, I personally enter corners just a small percentage slower than I would if I was racing, and either at the proper suggested gear or one gear higher than the suggested gear says. In most cars, particularly naturally aspirated or supercharged cars, this gives me a good buildup of torque over time so that I can maintain control in the corner while focusing on speed and angle. So in this case, since this is a long, sweeping turn, we'll be entering in third gear. Meanwhile, our speed should be at around 60 to 65 miles an hour, since when racing this car with sports hard tires, I'd enter it at around 75. Now, start trying this yourself. Enter the turn at the proper speed and initiate a slide. Focus on trying to keep your car somewhere along the racing line. The optimal line for points would have your front bumper just barely skirt the racing line from the outside, but we'll touch more upon that in another video. Try to get as close to that as you can and maintain it for as long as you can by managing your brakes and throttle just like last time. Note that the emphasis should be on your throttle rather than over relying on the brakes. If you start to veer toward the outside, then let off the throttle. If you start to straighten out and regain grip, then use more throttle. Do this until you can get it consistently. And while you're doing that, let me briefly touch upon the different types of cars and ways they are used to drift. The most common way to drift is with a front engine, rear wheel drive car. If designed correctly, this can offer really fantastic balance and affords you much more control over your drifts than most other drivetrain options. All wheel drive vehicles can drift fairly well too, if set up right. They have the advantage of allowing the driver to regain a bit of grip if they enter a corner too quickly, and they don't spin out near as easily as a rear wheel drive car. However, that grip comes at a cost since it can be much more difficult to maintain proper speed and angle. All wheel drive cars are much better at maintaining grip in times when the car is out of control, meaning they'll generally fight a lot harder to straighten themselves out, which you don't want. Rear engine vehicles are like a much more uncontrollable FR car usually. They're much more unforgiving if you add a bit too much angle or speed. They also tend to have problems with snap oversteer, so you need to be extra careful both when entering corners and while counter steering through the turn. Mid-engine rear wheel drive cars seem to have these same issues, but they're much less volatile. Some would argue that they're the best cars for drifting, since they're usually so extraordinarily balanced. But they do require much more delicate care than an FR car. They're sort of the middle ground between the rear engine and front engine, affording you most of the control of both of the other options, while being generally more tame than a rear engine car. Finally, there's the front wheel drive car. These technically can drift, but it's really nothing like drifting with any other drivetrain. I don't even know how to do it, and neither do most people. Front wheel drive drifting requires really strange vehicle settings and equally as strange techniques. It's probably best that you become incredibly comfortable with drifting before you attempt to do it with a front wheel drive car. One last thing. In case you're low on funds for some reason, you'll need exactly 68,000 credits for the next video. This shouldn't be difficult to get, what with all the seasonal events that shell out millions though. Today's homework is to keep going on this turn until you can hit it well. Then take your car to various other tracks and drift parts of them while the racing line is still on. Try to pick corners without any serious banking or elevation changes, and pick ones where you can go rather slow and easy. 
Again, we don't want to develop bad habits by trying to drift super complex corners without knowing how. Feel free to comment below with any questions you have, and I'll see you on Friday with another video.